Hi folks, it's Kevin here again. Yeah, I'm back in Teo National Park yet again. <laughs> this time I'm doing another trail around the lake. The lake is called Saha Yarvi. It's really Saw Lake. Saw as in use a, the tool to cut wood, but I just left the car behind and uh, I've got about three, maybe four kilometers to do before it gets dark and uh, before I set up my tarp tent compared to where I was last Sunday around Matilde Arvi, the trail here hasn't been used as much and so the snow is around 15 centimeters deep there are some tracks but uh, it could be heavy going let's see how we get on so I've got about an hour an hour and a half tops of daylight left so I really need to push on to uh, make it to a campsite beside the lake. It's a lot quieter than it was last Sunday where there were lots of people about. I have the woods entirely to myself it seems. Nice. We're going to uh, along the Sahajarvin Reiti. Sahajarvi is Saw Lake. The Reiti is the route and there's a place where you can make a fire about half a kilometer away called Kola Sunti. Sunti is like a, a sound or a, or a yeah, like a wide bay. Kalags means fish. In the middle of Sahayarvi is a small island. During the summer there is a small ferry that goes from the north shore to the island and then there's another one from the island to the south shore which lets you do a complete loop around Sahayarvi Lake. So I'm at the place where the small ferry goes and as you can see it's this cute almost home homemade looking affair. And the ferry is pulled over on a rope so it passes through the rollers there but uh yeah quite cool it can probably take about i don't know 10 people 20 people i'm not sure i'd want to push it too hard but kalasunti island is the one that's over there and the lava or lean to shelter is just over there i can see people's tracks leading out to it i think i might actually go there after all there isn't any really good pitch here around all the ground is quite high and uneven and, and also rocky, but uh, I'll go and have a look first. The ice is definitely uh, still quite solid. There's no wet wet spots and there's no open spots yet. So I guess it looks like it's pretty safe. And there are fairly fresh footprints that have come from the island. So that tells me the ice should be okay. I got the fire going finally. I decided to go old school and use some birch bark scrapings and uh, well used a ferro rod and uh, it started on the second strike but then went out again immediately. It took me a good 20 minutes of striking and striking and striking to uh, finally get the birch bark to ignite but uh, the fire seems to be going now okay fingers crossed and uh, it was frustrating but ultimately very satisfying to get it to work so these things do actually work okay so we're cooking some serious food tonight we got the trangia out so rather than just having a dehydrated meal i thought i'd go and cook something decent so tonight we're going to have uh, chicken and uh, i've just boiled some broccoli and we're going to have it with and make an Indian korma. It should be rather nice. So, food is almost ready. I just have to let it sit for a while and stew a bit just in its own juices. The only problem is I've got enough for about three people. As you can see, I have some snow melting. I didn't bring that much water with me, so I thought I'd take advantage of the fire and also save my gas by uh, by melting snow and then I'll run it through the water filter that I have just to be sh just to be sure okay so I'm all snuggle up in bed I have my hot water bottle and I have my hand warmers and uh, the fire is still going so yeah I should be warm enough tonight according to my thermometer it's about four degrees right now four degrees plus and it's not forecast to go 
much below zero. It should be relatively warm. So let's see what adventures await us tomorrow. Sleep well. Good night. Well, good morning. It's a cold one this morning. It's minus two at the minute. The sun has just come up. Yeah, I slept well last night. I could have slept longer even. And I was warm. So uh, the hot water bottle trick and the hand warmers did a really, really good job. In fact, I've got one on, on my, against my back. It's still warm. We get some coffee on. And after that, then I have got a nice breakfast of bacon and uh, I'm going to fry that and then I am going to have it with a Finnish delicacy from Eastern Finland. They are called Karelian pies or Karelian Pirakka. So as promised this is an example of a Karelian pie or in Finnish Karelian Pirakka. There are two types in Finland. One is with a rice in the center, a rice filling. The other has mashed potato. The dough is made from rye and then it's sort of like pinched together like that and it's yeah but so big it's quite thin the classic way to eat them is to uh hard boil eggs chop up the eggs very fairly fine or fairly chunky depending on how you like it and then mix it with butter so you have this munavoy or egg butter and then you heat up the piraka the pie and then you spread the egg butter on top so what I'm planning to do today is I'm going to fry the bacon and then I am going to put these into the bacon fat to absorb, absorb that. And then I'm going to let the heat of the pan warm up these as well. So uh, yeah, I can eat a warm breakfast. It was late this morning at half past six. So definitely the spring is on the way back. And uh, I've noticed in the last Maybe even a couple of weeks or so, the birds are singing more in the mornings. Mmm, yummy. Okay, all packed and ready to go. Everything is as I left it. The temperature is about zero degrees at the moment. So it froze a little bit during the night. That's actually a good thing because there is more of a trail here compared to the first leg yesterday. And uh, a flattened down trail with a, an icy crust makes walking a lot easier because I'm not sinking into the snow. So here's an information sign for the Teo National Park. I can show you basically what the route has been we're taking. So I parked here in Nenostanomi yesterday and walked in up over the high point there yesterday through the forest and then I walked across the ice and stayed in the Lintu shelter on this little island here called Kalasunti. Um, at the moment I am somewhere around here and the idea is this is this is Sahayarvi as you can see this lake here the idea then is to go continue on and I'll basically go along the shores of another lake called Hamarin Yarvi for a short while before continuing on and back to where my car is parked so it's a total round trip of eight and a half kilometers I'm going along the southern shore of uh, Hammari Yarvi at the moment. Uh, the trail doesn't go right beside the water, it's a little bit maybe 50 100 meters away, but you can see it hopefully through the trees. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know what it is. Am I just tired this morning, or is the fact that I'm on a time schedule? But uh, my pack feels heavier than yesterday. Oh, luckily, there's only a couple of kilometers left to go back to the car. I'm starting to feel it now. These funny looking green little bushes that are sticking up through the snow are actually blueberries, blueberry plants.
one very important aspect of being a Finn is to go and collect blueberries towards the middle and the end of the summer. And of course, because there's such a thing as Yoka Miehen Oikiodit, or every man's rights, uh, unless you're on private property or too close to somebody's residence, it is legal for you to pick berries or indeed mushrooms uh, freely in any forest in Finland. Freshly picked blueberries, there's nothing like them. They, they're the store-bought ones are not a patch on them. They're pure water, whereas the wild ones are full of flavour. You can freeze them afterwards, or you can dry them out. There's nothing nicer than a little bit of vanilla custard with uh, blueberries on a pancake. Ooh, I'm getting hungry thinking about it. So, as you can see, I'm walking in uh, woods that are primarily Norway spruce, fir trees certainly. Yeah, unlike what you find in Ireland, where it's all planted in dead straight lines and as close as together as possible to make the fewer branches as possible. These are uh, much more spread out. I dislike forestry in Ireland intensely because it's because of that. It's dark underneath. There's practically no undergrowth and all you're walking on is a carpet of needles which is very very quiet. I find it kind of creepy. Here though, as previously mentioned, you've got blueberries growing and uh, at least there is some uh, light getting through and uh, yeah it's not as oppressive to me and I remember a few years back there was a I think it was the Minister for the, Minister for the Forestry and Agriculture saying that oh yes we'll, we'll plant so and so many thousands of acres of conifers Norway spruce, etc. And I'm ah, sure it will bring loads of tourists because don't the tourists love the trees? Uh, yeah, like this maybe, the way they have it in Ireland. Definitely not. I wouldn't travel or pay money to see it. Anyway, rant over. Right, back at the car. Whew, I started to flag on the end part of that. The elevation gains weren't huge, but there were lots of ups and downs. There were at least four. But, uh, yeah, pity I couldn't use my big camera and my new tripod. That was effectively three kilos of equipment that I uh, dragged around nearly 10 kilometers just for nothing. But I suppose it's good training. Uh, yeah, so much for the plan to use a tarp. I just saw the lava, a lean to shelter in, in Kalasumpi, and I thought, nah, it's too good to pass up such a, because it's such a beautiful place. I hope you enjoyed this adventure with me. Hopefully, you'll get to use a tarp next time. Yeah, look forward to seeing you out again on the next trail. All the best. Bye-bye.